Hey folks, in this video we're going to be discussing drop down menus in Google Sheets. We're going to be working off um, a previous video where we created um, a, a dynamic Google Sheets query function leveraging some uh, data input fields. Uh, so you can see over in column H, we have some places that we entered data, which are then being referenced in our query function so that we can dynamically update the calculation. We're going to be implementing a new system so that we can use drop-down menus so that our peers, collaborators, stakeholders, colleagues, or ourselves can uh, move through the data set without having to manually enter anything in because we will have a menu of options to choose from. So we are going to uh, introduce where and how to create drop-down menus in Google Sheets. We'll talk about creating reference columns that will populate the, the fields within the, the drop-down menu. And then we're going to do an example using query in order to create a dynamic place where our values are, um, are updated without us having to manually do it. So we're going to begin uh, by talking about drop-down menus. And drop-down menus in Google Sheets are located within the Data tab, and then they are in the fourth section, uh, and they are called Data Validation. And Data Validation will give you a couple different options to choose from. So we begin our process by adding a rule, and we are met with this sidebar that enables us to um, first identify where our drop-down menu will exist, and then expand on the way that we want that criteria to be entered. So right now we are applying our data validation to cell A1 in the data validation tab. And if we go over here and we just select it, you see we have two options which are being populated by this criteria field over here. Uh, we also have the ability to add in some advanced options in here where we can add um, a show help for a selected cell. So you could like write a little note to somebody to explain to them how to use something. Additionally, we have the ability to reject the input. So if somebody goes into A1 and they attempt to enter in a name, for example, they will be given this error message here that does not allow them to enter in a value. Um, additionally, we have the ability to um, show a warning. Right? So if we go back in here and I start typing in a value that doesn't exist, you'll see that we're allowed to do it, but we get a message that says that this was an invalid submission and that the input must be within the list. Uh, we also have the ability to change the style of uh, our, our drop-down menu. So right now it's a, it's a chip, which you can see has this um, oval wrapped around it. Uh, we also have the ability to just use a drop down error er, arrow so that they can see that something's in there. Or if you want to, you can just have it be plain text so the individual um, doesn't isn't distracted by any of the visualizations. My personal preference is to use these drop down arrows, uh, but ultimately you can do whatever you want to. Um, you also have the ability um, to change um, the color of your cell if you wanted to up top here. Uh, which is a nice little feature, um, you know, so you can kind of filter through and this will give, this will give your, your stakeholders um, some, some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like some indication of uh, what they are um, doing, uh, some feedback about data that they're entering in there. And you also have the option to go in here to add in uh, some more fields if you want to, right? So you can keep going like this. This is one way to do um, for my purposes, I do not like to enter my criteria within the data validation. And the reason that I don't like doing this is because um, I, I like to have things dynamically update. Um, my goal as a professional is to cut down on uh, the amount of manual actions I need to take in order to maintain and update my data environments. I like to think a bit about it in terms of constructing a foundation that I'm capable of building on. 
And when I set something up so that I no longer need to actively maintain or update it, it enables me to do other things in order to support the overall goal of the project or endeavor. So if you have a drop down menu like this, uh, where instead of having option one, we have the word Canada, and then option two, we have as United States, and then option three, we have as UK, much like we do in um, our example data set in here. Um, if a new country is added, that will require you to go here and add that country in like this. And I personally do not believe that's a very efficient or effective use of your time. What I would encourage you to do is to construct a tab within your workbook where you enter in those values, right? Or where those values enter in themselves. So we are going to be introducing references here and then we are going to talk about how to make them dynamic and quote unquote automatic. So what I'm gonna do in here is I'm going to create a field where I have some values. And my apologies for not introducing this earlier, but if you've been following along for a few videos now, we have a data set that includes countries and people's names and some time series data and then some values associated with all those data points. And we have three different countries in here. We have the United States, we have the UK, and we have Canada. And you can see kind of on my infinity scroll here that we are consistently seeing all of those values. So what we could potentially want to achieve here is we would want to have a dynamic drop down here that would enable us to pick between Canada, UK, and the United States so that we no longer have to type in UK or United States, right? We would just have a drop down menu here that would enable us to filter through that. And the reason for that is not because we don't know that, but we may give this workbook to somebody else and they wouldn't know what all those options are. We kind of want to serve them something that they're capable of using immediately. So we can use this references tab here in order to create a drop down menu where we change the criteria to drop down from a range. And then we'll have this option here to use an absolute reference in order to pull in, or rather a reference, to pull in the column that we want to pull in. So you can see that we're applying our range to data validation uh, A1. And then for our criteria, for our drop down from a range, we're doing references A through A. And then we'll hit OK in here, and then you'll see all those options will populate for us. Um, and then we can go to advanced options and we're gonna do it as an arrow and we're gonna reject the input and then we're going to select done. And now when we go back to our data validation tab, you'll see that we have those three options in here. In the event that we wanted to extend this list, we could type in a new country and then you'll see that that is now automatically added in there. Now, the challenge that we're currently facing is that even though we have a reference that is populating our data validation, we're still required to manually enter that data in here. What we want to have happen is we want to have an automatic menu that expands and contracts with our data set. That's where I would recommend the use of two functions, query, and unique. So we're going to begin by exploring query and then we're going to add in unique in order to make this more impactful for our use case. So I'm going to begin by using query. I'm gonna to go to sheet one and I am going to select the entire data set. I'm going to use a comma and a double quote and I am going to select A where A is one of these days I'll get it. A is not null, and I am going to order by A. And I'm doing that because I want a, um, an alphabetized list of all of my values. So I'm gonna hit enter. And now you'll see that we are getting literally every single instance of those values, right? So query 
provides us with you know every single thing in there it is, it is a hyper literal function so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add in a unique function and what unique does is it uh, will returns all unique values in a data set so it discard it gets rid of duplicates um, so all i have to do is wrap my query in a unique and now you can see i have a nice clean list of all the values that i want in Typically what I'll do as well, and you don't have to do this, um, I will typically uh, label A as null, which then just gives me a list like this. That way I don't have countries in there. That way when I start, um, so we're gonna remove this data validation. We're gonna add a new one. We're going to change our criteria from dropdown to dropdown from a range. And then I am going to reference uh, the automatic menus using query. And I'm gonna select that, and I'm gonna hit okay. I'm going to go to my advanced options. I'm gonna reject the warning. I am going to select arrow. I am going to finish that. And now when we go to data validation, you can see we have Canada, UK, and United States in here, just as we wanted. And then if I go to sheet one, and I go to the bottom of this, and I start typing in a new country, and let's type in uh, some other country. Which one do we want to do? Ireland. When we go back to our data validation tab, we should see those values appear in here. And we can see now we have Ireland and Mexico in there. And the reason that we didn't have to go anywhere else to do it is because our query is automatically pulling in everything from our data set. I would encourage you when you think about um, some of these more meta considerations when you approach uh, a data environment, think about how you can leverage the resources at your disposal, such as um, some of your meta uh, columns, such as um, names, in order to feed back into your environment, right? So when we go back to our example in here and we have this drop down, what we can do is we can clear it out we can add a data validation rule, and you can see it's now impacting H1. We are going to change our criteria to drop down from a range, and then we are going to go to our automatic menus, hit OK. We are gonna do our advanced option. We're gonna display it as an arrow. We're gonna hit done, and then we go back to our example in here, and now you can see we have a drop down menu that enables us to filter through all of the data that exists within our range. That's why pulling from the data set is a, is a valuable tool at your disposal, because then as the data set updates, for example, if we get rid of Mexico and Ireland, and we go back to our example, it's already, it's already done for us, right? And ideally what we are going to construct here would be some type of data pipeline that updates sheet one for us automatically. That way we have no manual data entry in here and our peer group will have a up-to-date uh, data visualization exploration tool at their fingertips. Um, what I'm gonna do now is add in a menu for our dates in here. So this will be another opportunity for us to explore um, how to, and I'm gonna get rid of this tab here because we don't need it anymore. And I'm gonna get rid of data validation because we don't need that one anymore. And now we're gonna operate off of our automatic menus using query field. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use unique with query in order to get um, all of the dates in our data set. So I'm gonna go back to sheet one and I'm gonna select C where C is not null. And I'm gonna order by C. And you know, what? I'm gonna order by C descending. I'm gonna do double quote. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna label C as nothing. That way I don't have any headers. I'm gonna add in a double quote. I'm gonna do comma one, I'm gonna hit enter. And now what we're doing is we're wrapping our, we're nesting our query statement within unique. So it's gonna get rid of all of our duplicates. We're selecting column C because that's where all of our months exist. 
And we're saying where column C is not null, so that means we're excluding these blanks. We're ordering by C descending. That means that 12 1 2022 should be at the top and uh, January 1st, 2019 should be at the bottom. And then we're labeling C as nothing. So we won't have a header that says month or anything like that. We hit enter. And now you can see we have this long list in here. And we're gonna go back to our example. And we are going to um, remove the value from H and remove the value from, or sorry, from H3 and H4. And we are going to add another data validation into H3. And we are going to reference our dropdown from a range. We're going to select um, our automatic menus using query tab. We're gonna reference B3B and we'll hit okay. And then we're gonna go into our advanced options and we're gonna change it to an arrow and we're gonna hit done. And now we go back in here and now we have a dropdown menu that enables us to select any date, right? So now we're gonna put in 10, 1, 2021, and we're gonna go into um, H4 and we're gonna add a rule. We're going to go drop down from a range and then we are going to go to our automatic menus. We can reuse column B. We're gonna to go to our advanced options. We're gonna reject the input if it's invalid. We're gonna use an arrow and we're gonna hit done. Now we can go back to our example and we wanna enter in something after October, 2021, because if we enter it before it will error out. And now you can see we have a dynamic menu in here that enables us to select any of these countries and then to select any two date ranges that enables us to get a dynamic slice of all the things that are going on in here. I hope you found this to be helpful. It's um, something that we're going to be leveraging in our dashboard build, uh, build where we will use the countries and the people's names and the start dates as a way to create a dynamic environment that enables us to explore data. The purposes of this was to introduce the concept of drop-down menus in Google Sheets, understanding the various ways that you could implement them into your own workflows, and then exploring a more advanced implementation that leverages your data set within your data visualization. If you're curious about more um, data build things, I have videos on my channel. Um, I'm always interested in feedback, so you know, hit me up in that comment section, and uh, I wish you the best of luck on your data journey.